Hello students, welcome to another video lecture for ComSci 125 operating systems. In this chapter, we're going to talk about segmentation. In the previous chapter, we talked about address translation, wherein it provided a mechanism for the virtual address space to be mapped to a different location in the physical memory. Specifically, we talked about uh, dynamic relocation wherein we use the uh, extra hardware support provided by the base and bounce register in order to relocate a process in the physical memory. Now let's take a look at segmentation. We observed that in the basic base and bounds approach, there are some inefficiencies, in particular, the problem of internal fragmentation. The idea of internal fragmentation is that, let's say we are given this 16 kilobyte virtual address space when it is mapped to the physical memory there is a big chunk of free space which will be actually unused by the process and this actually takes up physical memory so when we have other processes we might actually run out of memory even though there are some free space available in reality. So this scenario is what is being addressed by segmentation. In a way, uh, segmentation just uh, generalizes the base and bounds approach. Right? The idea is to have a base and bounds register for each logical section in the process's address space. Let's define what a segment is. A segment is just a contiguous portion of the address space of a particular length. Unlike in the traditional base and bounds registers of approach, we have this entire thing as contiguous. Right? What we want in segmentation is we can split these parts and they will be given their corresponding base and bounds registers. So we have a a segment for code, a segment for stack, and a segment for heap. And each segment can be placed in different part of uh, the physical memory. So in essence, we have a base and bounds register for each segment. Let's take a look at this example. So let's say the physical memory has 64 kilobytes of memory and then let's say that the first 16 kilobytes of the physical memory is occupied by the operating system then if we have segmentation in effect what will happen is each logical section of a process's address space will be placed in different memory locations specified by the base and the size stored in the corresponding base and bounds register. So for example, let's take a look at the code segment. The code segment will contain the code section or the instructions. So it says here that the base is uh, 32 KB. So this will be the base and the size is 
two kb so that will be 32 kb until uh, 34 right? or 33 let's say 33 here and then the head the base is 64 so it's set here and the size is two kilobyte here so and then the last bit the start is placed here 28 okay somewhere here and it grows uh, downwards so this is uh, how uh, to place the different segments in the uh, physical memory so notice that they need not be contiguous right? each segment is or can be located by using the corresponding base and size or base or limit registers for this particular segment. This one is a better example. So let's have, uh, let's say we have a reference to a virtual address 100. So again, looking at the at the address space of the process. Okay, so in this illustration, the virtual address the code section is from 0 KB to 2 KB. So this 100 memory reference resides somewhere here. Okay. Um, now, since the code section starts at 0 uh, in the address space, then the offset of this memory reference is 100. To get the physical address in the main memory, we simply add the offset, which is 100, to the base of the code segment. So this will be, the base is 32K, 32K plus 100, then this will be the location in the physical memory of uh, this memory reference. So this will be the actual physical address in the physical memory if we reference the ad virtual address 100 in this manner. That's how it's okay, So let's have an example here. Uh, let's say we have a reference to a virtual address for 4200. Uh, looking back at the processes address space, okay, 4200 is somewhere in the heap, right? So it's somewhere in the heap. Okay? So with that, this is the location of, of that memory reference in the virtual address. Now the heap section starts at the virtual address 4096. So this is the start of the heap section. Unlike in the code section where in the starting offset is zero for the code section here, the heap starts at 4KB. So to get the offset from 4200, we need to subtract the starting uh, address of the heap in the virtual address space. So this will be, it looks something like this, 4200 minus the start of the heap in the virtual address space, which is 4096. And this will give us 104 as the offset. So what will happen is, this is how it will look like. We simply add the offset, which is 104 plus 34K, this is one, and we're going to get this value, which is the actual physical address. Right? So that is the mechanism mechanism or, or how to compute the virtual uh, the physical address given the uh, 
virtual address reference. The main difference between this example and this example is that here the offset or the starting section of the code section is zero. Here in the heap it is uh, 4096. That's why we need to perform the subtraction to get the actual offset. And once it's computed, we add that to uh, the base address. Now, what will happen if we access an illegal address? So this is where the segmentation fault or uh, segmentation violation happens. If an illegal address such as 7KB, which is beyond the end of heap, is referenced, the OS will generate a segmentation fault. So probably you've experienced this when you try to access some illegal memory location, the OS will generate a segmentation fault. Right? And the hardware will actually detect that that is at the box. So this example, if we have uh, 7KB, okay, and let's say we have this uh, layout in the memory, if we access 7KB, this, it, that is outside the, the range of the heap. Okay? So that means that that is an illegal, uh, legal uh, access. Now let's talk about, uh, talk about uh, how do we refer to a segment. Okay, we are just given a we are given a virtual address. How does the hardware determine the segment and the offset? So usually there is an encoding mechanism that is performed on the virtual address so that the physical address, specifically the segment and the offset, can be easily derived. So the first approach is called the explicit approach in the, we chop up the address space, the virtual address space, into segments, so this is the virtual, virtual address space into segments based on uh, the top few bits of the virtual address. So if you want to refer to a segment, okay, if you are given this, uh, so this uh, 14 bit address space, so one approach is to dedicate the topmost two bits to refer to the uh, segment okay, as shown here. For example, if we are given a virtual address 4200, okay, so where did we use this 4200? This is the 4200. We have this 4200 in binary, this will be the uh, representation binary. So uh, when we examine this bit pattern and observe that the topmost two bits is 0, 1, then we are referring to the heap. And then the remaining bits will just be the offset on the heap. Okay, so the question that you're trying to answer is how do we uh, refer to a segment given just the virtual address? So this is how we do it. The other bit pattern will represent the uh, other sections or the other segments. So zero, 0 for the code, zero, 01 for the heap, 10 for the stack, and 11 may be reserved or unstacked. 
So this is how you perform the computation programmatically. We define some uh, constants. You have the segment mass. Okay, this is the segment mass. Okay. So we simply set the topmost uh, two bits to one one. That will be the three and hex. And then the segment fifth will be 12. The, these are 14 bits, so we can shift that uh, to the right the 12 to get the uh, segment. And then to get the offset, we simply use this mask. Okay. So that given the virtual address, we can get the offset. So let's say we are given a so we are given a virtual address. We would like to determine the segment. So this can be achieved using this uh, expression. So you n, uh, logical n, or bitwise n, the virtual address to the segment must to get the, uh, to zero out the uh, first 12 bits of the virtual address. And then you shift it to the right by 12 bits. So there you will be able to get the segment value. Then for the offset, you simply perform a bitwise n to the virtual address and the offset mask, you get the offset. Now for some checking, you have to check if the offset is greater than or equal to the bounds of the segment. So if it is greater, the offset is greater, then you generate an extension. Else, the physical address is equal to uh, the base address. So assuming that uh, this is the uh, uh, base is an array, right, of, uh, an array of uh, base addresses, right, so the segment will be an offset and then plus offset, you get the physical address. And then register equals, you assign the, you access the physical memory and you assign that to the register. So here base is an array of addresses. Right. So what are the uh, disadvantage of this uh, explicit approach? Okay. The first one is that if only three sections are used for three segments, then two bits to store the segment is uh, wasteful. Okay, so we have this extra value here, which is unused. And the limits, uh, this limits a segment size. Example, uh, the max uh, segment, segment size is four kilobytes because of the 12 bits uh, offset. So an alternative to the explicit approach is the implicit approach, wherein uh, we determine the segment based on how the virtual address was generated. So uh, in a way, it will be more, it will be derived or computed automatically, depending uh, which uh, register or which part of the code generated the address. Let's say if the address generated came from the program counter, then most likely that address will reference uh, a memory area in the code set. The next question, uh, question that we will ask is, how about the stop segment? How do we refer to the stop segment? In the previous examples, we talk about referring memory area in the code and the heap. Okay. Now, those two reference, uh, those two segments. Normally, the code segment no long, uh, is not changing, whereas the heap uh, will change depending on the request for additional memory and. The heap will grow upwards, meaning increasing memory addresses. The stop, on the other hand, grows uh, backward. 
So there should be additional information to maintain in order to perform whether the movement will be in the positive direction or in the negative direction. So in addition to the base and size fields in the description of the segments, we also need another information whether the segment will grow in the positive direction or grow in the negative direction. As shown here, we indicate or we use one. So this can be a bit, bit field. So we use one to represent positive growth, whereas zero to represent negative growth. Because this is the movement of the stack, the growth of the stack. So let's have an example of how to refer to a memory location in the stack when we have segmentation. Let's say we have a reference to a virtual address 15 KB. So as you can see in the address space, 15 KB is here in the processes uh, virtual address space. If we convert this to binary representation, this is how it will look like. So, and the hex representation will be a 0x3c00. Right? So our task is to find the segment and the offset. So the first thing that we know that using the explicit approach, the first or the last, the, the uppermost two bits will represent the segment. So if we see that this is uh, 1, 1, Okay. Uh, in our table, uh, it's not uh, so. This one is uh, unused, but let's say here it is uh, one one. So uh, Okay, so that will be the segment, and then so three say segment, and then the offset will be the remaining parts will be three zero zero, which is uh, three kb. Okay, then uh, since we know that this is a stack, right? We need to compute the negative offset, which is equal to the offset minus the maximum uh, segment size. So the maximum segment size here is uh, actually 4K. Okay? So the maximum segment size is 4K, but here is 2K. So 3K minus 4K, that will be minus uh, 1KB. Then the physical address can be computed as the negative offset plus the stock base, okay? and then uh, this will be the resulting uh, location in the uh, physical address. So negative 1 KB plus 28 KB. So that will be located uh, somewhere here okay? in the physical memory. Right? So, that's how it's done for referring to a memory location in the uh, stop segment. Okay, next is support for sharing. Uh, support for sharing uh, is uh, useful if you want uh, to reuse, let's say we have several processes in the system and some portions of, uh, of the, some segments can be shared between uh, two processes. 
So normally uh, this is done for code sharing because uh, this way uh, we conserve memory space. Administration, administration. So the idea of code sharing is let's say we have this the physical memory and if this is the code segment process A can use this and process B can actually use this also since normally the code uh, do not change, so they can be read only and execute, and that's how it is accomplished by adding additional information on the uh, specific segment. Okay, so as you can see, as you can observe, we are adding additional information on the description for each segment initially we only have the base and size then we added the field whether it is growing upwards or downwards in memory and we also added protection bits so normally the permissions are read write and execute okay so there's also a differentiation between fine-grained and coarse-grained segmentation. In coarse-grained segmentation, uh, the, usually the number of segments are small. Typically, we have the segment for the code, the heap, and the stack. For fine-grained segmentation, uh, this will allow more flexibility. It is up to the OS developer to define uh, a segment table to describe the different segments in the, uh, the different segments that will be available for uh, memory allocation. So some common questions for or some OS support for segmentation. Uh, first question to, uh, to ask is what should the OS do? Uh, the OS do uh, during a context switch and so how will it perform the context switch when there is segmentation what should the OS do when a segment grows and lastly how should the free space in memory be managed we're going to answer some of these questions in uh, succeeding chapters so another issue or another uh, consideration that must be addressed with the OS when supporting segmentation is managing fragmentation. In the base and bounds approach, we suffered or processes or the system suffered from uh, internal fragmentation. If we have segmentation, the system is going to suffer from external uh, fragmentation, meaning little holes of free space in physical memory uh, uh, that makes it difficult to allocate new uh, memory segments. So let's say there is a total of 24 kilobytes free, but they are not in one contiguous segment. Therefore, the uh, OS cannot allocate or cannot satisfy a 20 kilobyte request. How does that look? So this is how uh, that looks like. So we have uh, this free space, this free space, and this free space. So if we combine these spaces, we can create a bigger chunk of memory. But since we have external fragmentation, 
we can allocate this specific account because it will not satisfy a uh, larger request. So how do we approach that? We can implement some uh, compaction wherein from time to time, the OS will, the memory management component of the OS will perform a compaction wherein it will stop the running processes, copy the, the segments to another area, and then change segment register value. So this is how it will, it will look like. So the allocated ones will be moved closer to the operating system, and the unallocated ones will be moved uh, further from the harder on the physical level. Now, uh, this one is quite costly. Uh, that's why it's not the preferred approach. So a, a better approach would be to use a some form of free list management that uh, manages the list of available uh, or free slots in the physical memory. So we have approaches like uh, best feed, worst feed, and the body algorithm, which we will discuss in later chapters. So this will end this chapter on segmentation.